I wake early just as daylight washes out the stars. Bike day. We're so excited on the drive out there that we barely talk at all. And soon enough, Jaden, Zuri, and I are unloading our bikes from Dad's pickup at Eagle Lake Trailhead. Morning meets my face like the cool side of a pillow. The only down part of my up day is bad news that might come about Grandma Miller. She said she'd call today if she got her test results. If the results are good, they won't call her until Monday. If bad, they'll call her today. I know she'd want me to enjoy the bike trip and not worry, but fear tugs at my thoughts. We attach water bottles, tuck in first aid and toolkits, then stow food and bike bags borrowed from Jaden's dad that now hang on either side of our back wheels. I guess he's a big cyclist. I'm shivering in the dim light, but I know I'll warm up soon. You look ready, Dad says as we fasten our helmets. Thanks for bringing us, Mr. Cadillo. Jaden gives him a salute. I'll pick you up at five. Dad looks at his watch. Seven hours from now. Your phones have no connection out here, but count on it. I'll be here. That means I won't know if it's cancer or not until he picks me up. For some reason, this is actually comforting. You have enough water? He's been reminding me that water is more important than food since I was little. Yes, Dad, I say, trying to sound grateful instead of exasperated. And I give you the all clear. I give you the big clear. The all clear, Dad. Right, the all clear. Zuri and Jaden smile, but don't laugh. Bye, Dad, I say flatly, nudging him to go. I want to start our adventure. When the crunch of the gravel under his tires dies away, none of us says anything. The quiet feels weighted. 30 miles. On screen, it looked easy. A bright green line marking a smooth path. Now we see it starts with a steep hill. Let's do this, Zuri says, unfreezing us. I hold up my phone, stick my head into the camera's frame, and try to get the trailhead sign to show. A selfie already, Jaden says. We might not survive, says Zuri, joking. Come here, I motion them over. We clonk our helmets together and I touch the screen. Three nervous smiles, but all eyes open. We sweat up the hill, clicking our gears to easier speeds, inching forward. Okay, I really hope the next hill is easier, puffs Jaden. I thought I was in shape, I say. My legs are burning. Better shape than I am, he says, clicking to first gear. I found my Achilles hill. Zuri groans at his pun as I laugh. Finally, we coast down a long grade, and Jaden lets out a whoop as the wind rushes past. Tires hum against the pavement. We pedal through dense trees, then open fields. I imagine Grandma cheering me on. I hear the triumphant climax of a choir song in my head. By the time we reach a covered picnic table at Lakeshore, the sun is high. It's supposed to be cool today, but we're hot. Get ready for hat hair, Jaden says, taking off his helmet. Speak for yourself, Zuri says, her new braids in perfect order, of course. I hang my helmet on my handlebars, lean my bike next to others, and pull up my ponytail band out. I think my mane's turned into a mop. Jaden grins. Mop top. Check out this view, Zuri says. We've been heading toward the lake for nearly four hours. Now it lies shimmering before us. A deep calm comes over me as I take in the expanse of rippling light. Zuri takes my hand and squeezes it. I'm so glad you knew about this beautiful place, she says. A breeze lifts off the water. This is the kind of moment I want to write songs about. Check it out, Jaden said, skipping a stone across the water. Zuri and I look for a stone, too. My dad says flat ones bounce better, she says. I pick up a flattish gray one and copy Jaden's technique. The stone plunks into the water. And a brilliant throw by Kihana, I say in a sportscaster voice. It's such a great day that I can laugh at myself. It takes some practice, says Zuri, as her rock dumps three times. Like this. Jaden throws again, this time in slow motion. My next rock makes two jumps. I'm getting it. I'm impressed, Zuri says. And I, Jaden starts, his hand on his heart, his voice ultra sincere, am starved. We all crack up and sit at the picnic table, the shaded metal benches cool under our legs. Everything tastes better out here than it does at home, I swear. It's this fresh air, Zuri says. He waves her empty water bottle in the air and trots towards a spigot sticking out of the ground. These live oak trees must be ancient. Jaden says, looking up. The trees rise to the sky, and then he looks into my eyes and his voice lowers. Do you ever feel too small to hold a big feeling? I nod and hold his gaze. My body can barely hold my heart sometimes, I say. Right? Like the high note of a great song or the first morning of summer vacation. 
This wasn't what I expected him to say. It's like, I don't know, when you overload on sugar and almost keel over. I laugh, but my joy dips. I thought he was talking about love, of course, like I was. This place is totally great, he stands up. Just then a shriek pierces the air and we all and we run toward the sound. Zuri is on the ground by the water spigot, pushing off of the grass. Then she twists onto her back. She holds one leg straight, keeping her ankle stiff. Are you okay, Jaden asks. Zuri winces. My ankle, her words come out pinched. I tripped on that tree root, she points behind her. Is anything bleeding, I ask? Can you move your foot? I clasp her hand and kneel her by her head. I don't think so. She props herself up on her elbows. Jaden sits on the grass and eases off her sock. The ankle is already swelling. I better not touch it, he says. I don't want to make it worse. Good idea, I say. A pang of jealousy rises as I see Jaden's hand carefully guide the sock off her foot, and I push the feeling down, ashamed. Zuri's clearly hurting. Her teeth are clenched and her breathing sounds shallow. Do you want to sit up, I ask? She nods. We scooch her up so that she leans up against me. A silence falls over her, us. We look at each other. We look at the bikes. We're 15 miles from the trailhead. You guys sh should go ahead, Zuri said, her throat tight. I'll wait here and you can bring help. No way, Jaden says. It would take us till dark to get back to you. We can't leave you alone. I wonder if she can hop on her good foot. What if we get on either side of you, leave the bikes here and I'll walk? Zuri looks doubtful. Jaden stands and walks in a little circle. He stops. What if we all stay here? Your dad would send help if we didn't show up. Or I could go alone, I say, though I don't like this idea much. I could meet my dad and bring him back here. We fall silent, still thinking. None of our ideas feel right. Each one has an odd corner that doesn't fit. What about this, I say. Zuri, you sit on your bike and steer while Jaden and I roll it along, one of us on each side. You can rest your foot on the pedal. We'll leave the other two bikes behind. What if I fall? It'll hurt, Jaden says, smiling. Zuri says, is that supposed to be funny? Yeah, sorry. Z, I say, it's the only way we can stay together and keep you off your feet. What do you say? We wobble at first. Zuri is heavier than I realize. She needs more speed to stay balanced. Let's lower the seat, she says, then my good foot can touch the ground. She discovers she can coast pretty well on her own using her good foot to push herself. Are you steady by yourself? Maybe Jaden and I can still ride our bikes, just slowly. What about hills, Jaden asks. On hills, Zuri gets off, leans on Jaden, and hops while I push her bike. I wish it was me leaning on Jaden, but it's silly to wish for a broken ankle, isn't it? I focus on doing my part. While Zuri waits at the top, Jaden and I pedal our bikes up. Soon we're set sweating, we have to stop for water often. Our progress is slow, much slower than walking. It's obvious we won't make it to Trailhead by five, but we don't talk about it. Dad will be worried sick. With each passing minute, I feel worse for him. We keep moving. Coyote howls and I fight an urge to duck. Zuri's eyes go wide and Jaden says, oh, don't worry. Coyotes run all over by my grandparents' land. They howl to check in with other coyotes nearby. Nearby, I say. Wild ones avoid humans, I promise. Jaden, you're not very comforting, Zuri says. We come to a level place and settle into a slow rolling. I'm teetering, sometimes from riding so slow, but we stay together. The farther we go, the more it feels like we're going to make it. Five o'clock passes, then six. Darkness creeps into the treetops. Our water is running low, Jaden says. Z, you drink it. I can't even tell if her ankle's hurting. She's being so stoic. She takes a sip. We're going to have a story to tell, I say. Around the next bend, a light bobs in the distance. See that, Zuri says? I hope it's my dad. I don't think about what it could be if it isn't. The light grows. It's moving slowly and seems like a flashlight. Dad, I call. Kihana, Jaden, Zuri? We're all smiles as dad comes into view, but he practically cries at the sight of us. Gracias a Dios. What happened? Is Zuri okay? He asks. She fell, I started. But we wanted to stay together, and Jaden ends. It's too, it hurt too much to pedal, Zuri says. But the lake, definitely the best part. I learned to skip rocks and even peanut butter and sandwich tasted amazing. Our boys lay, layers over each other, telling the story in pieces. Dad walks us back up 
to the trailhead, and when Zuri hops into Dad's pickup, we feel pride alongside relief. We climb in different people than when we climbed out this morning. Weirdly, this is one of my favorite days ever. Fatigue takes over and we settle into silence as the truck drones over the highway. I'm tired in that good, deep way and close my eyes. Grandma, it's as if I forgot. My mind's been so full until the second. I sit up straight and look at Dad. He avoids my eyes, which is a bad sign. I blink tears away as the city lights come into view. At home, Dad and I unload my bike in silence and walk in slowly. Mom must see my reddened eyes because she pulls me into a hug. She called this afternoon, sweetheart. It is cancer, but Grandma's going to fight this. Dad stands close by, looking a little pale. Mom looks at the clock. You guys are later than I... Well, I had to do a little hiking to find them, Dad says. When I drove up, nobody. I almost had a heart attack. Thank God you're all okay. Except Zuri, I say. What do you mean? Mom's look of concern makes me wish I hadn't phrased it that way. She broke her ankle, I say quickly, or sprained it. But they rolled all the way back together, Dad says. I started down the trail, and there they came. I about cried when I saw them. You did cry, Dad. He clears his throat, then smiles. They actually handled it well. But Suri, how did it happen? A root, she tripped on it, and wow, can she scream. I'm going to call Mr. and Mrs. Thomas right now, she pulls out her phone. They took her to the minor emergency clinic when we dropped her off, Dad says. Okay, I'll call them tomorrow. I'm glad you guys figured out how to get back at least. You make a smart team. I go to my room and text Grandma, even though I'm sure she's asleep. So I heard the news. Are you okay? I even attached the trailhead photo, but my phone stays quiet through showering, brushing my teeth, and putting on my pajamas. Can I charge my phone in my room tonight? I ask Mom. Her head swivels between an open book and the computer screen, another research paper. You were with your friends all day, she says, her fingers hovering above the keys. Not for them, for Grandma. She might text back. She turns to look at me and pulls her hand away from the keyboard. She lets out a deep breath and her whole face softens. <sighs> sure, sweetheart, I hope she does. Her gaze drops to the floor and suddenly I want to comfort her. We hug, me leaning down and her squeezing me tight. We're not giving up, you know, she says in a strained voice. She's a strong woman. I know, I say. And though it feels odd to be the one saying it, I add, it'll be okay.